Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being a guest with Wisdom and Insights Coffee, Donuts, and Conversation. You've got your drink. Okay. What's your donut? I have tea. I have tea also. Look. And my substitute was going to be pound cake. <laughs> <laughs> but I have not made up on my mind if that sugar. It's something I need right now. So. <laughs> well, I had a, a English muffin and a cup of green tea, so that that has been my I think my so. my tea and my my coffee and my donut for this morning. So let's have a conversation. So okay. let's begin by you just telling us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and and who you are, and what makes you so great and fabulous. Okay. Um, my name is Ayana Crawford. I am the daughter <laughs> of Elizabeth Crawford. But um, I guess in a sense, background, um, graduated from Winthrop University um, in undergrad in psychology, minor in women and gender studies. That's what sparked my passion and kind of activism and uh, social justice issues, things, politics. Um, and I went on to get my master's in organizational leadership and change at Columbia College. Um, so that's uh, why I, the driving force of why I started my business. Um, my grad program was organizational leadership and change. Uh, with that, I incorporated every single icebreaker I've learned from every single leadership camp I've ever been in in my life, <laughs> any type of social gathering, any type of anything that they had me doing as a, like growing up, um, they always had icebreaker and team building everything. Um, I was a girl in Girl Scouts that looked forward to camping trips. I think now they call it glamping because I think every time we tried to go camp, it was raining. Anyway, um, <laughs> But yeah, we were glamping. But overall, in general, my business is Reviving Solutions LLC. Um, with that, we do those team building exercises. We um, do icebreaker team building facilitation, um, peer mediation um, is a part of that. And also, um, I added in my business uh, political consulting um, and event coordinating. So I do a little bit of everything, just a little tiny bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so Reviving Solutions mm -hmm. um, incorporates consulting mm -hmm. and uh, helping companies and organization to bring people together almost like with a synergy type of mindset that mm -hmm. um, everyone working together can achieve more, right? Yeah. So also... Um, and also valuing those voices of your workers. That's the driving force of why I do it, um, which is also incorporating a little bit with diversity and inclusion. Right, okay. So that was going to, we're gonna talk about that in a moment. So we're gonna push the pause on that one. Because okay. I do want to know, during this COVID-19 and the coronavirus and the pandemic, <laughs> All the Rona, the Roro. Okay, during all of this, wow. how has your business been impacted, if at all? How has everything that's going on, has it like put a pause on your creativity or has your business dropped? Um, speak on that for a moment. Yeah, um, right now is with everything going on with the protests and everything, that's literally right up my alley. Um, the fact of I'm helping or organize uh, protests and things um, in Colombia. Um, I'm hoping to help and get more involved in Rock Hill. Um, but because of COVID and everything, organizing during this time is a little different because you have to keep in mind certain people want to help, but not everyone wants to go out and be a part of the protest. They want to quarantine and distance themselves, um, which is perfectly understandable. Um, I agree. Um, and there's so much that people can do working from home um, and helping the movement from home without having to go out and um, endanger themselves with the virus 
viciously out there attacking. Um, so my business overall, I was going through a rebranding period. So I was already in the mindset of how can I revamp my business and it's crazy that this happened during corona time because now i have to revamp my business even more so in a way of not just a rebranding standpoint me adding me taking away certain products and services i had on my um, website but even now how i do things um because people are working from home there's zoom meetings after zoom meetings after zoom meetings and i think a lot of people are like tired of zoom um but I know for a fact that um, my business has to be able to correlate if businesses say that we're not coming back to work, we don't need a team builder or some type of facilitator there because we're not interacting as much. Um, so I have to, to tailor my business to be a part of the new new. So one thing that I am doing, I've been doing a lot of stuff pro bono. Um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of stuff pro bono. Um, one of the organizations I'm a part of, we have our summer retreat, and that is a big get to know everybody, icebreakers, after icebreakers, things like that. And I did offer my services and said, you know, hey, um, how can I help during this time? Let me help you come up with the icebreakers or at least lead it or something like that. So I'm actually leading our team um, retreat. And I wanna make sure that is well known to other CEOs and, and business owners and managers that just because we're having Zoom meetings, if they want their uh, retreats or their workshops and stuff like that to feel different, although people are in the comfort of their own homes, there's still a way to do that. There's still a way to make sure whether that's, you know, just a little tad bit, um, I'm gonna have them do a scavenger hunt in their own house. I'm going to time them. I'm going to have a list of items. Go get these items quickly. That's something that they're going to be just, that's going to be, like you said, that synergy, that competitiveness, that that whole excitement of like, oh my, I look at my house in a different way because I'm trying to win this contest. Mm -hmm. um, this is changing those mindsets. Um, and then, like I said, my political work wise has definitely changed. A lot of um, people are um, running for uh, different offices around the state. Um, so I'm helping with social media management and things like that for, for those candidates. Um, but yeah, no, more than anything, COVID-19 in a, in a sense, all it did was sit me down to focus on my business. Um, but now during this time, I realized that my business can be full-time if I make it full-time. Okay, all right. And I, I understand that giving back to the community and um, all of that advocacy and all the great things that you do, but also not discounting yourself because I understand about the pro bono and everything. I knew that I was coming. Yeah. yeah, still you can do a sliding scale. But now with everything that's going on, how do you feel about the um, social justice or should I say injustice uh, that's going on. We've all seen the headlines. We've all watched Mr. George Floyd. Um, I didn't watch the video, but almost all of us have watched, you know, the assassination pretty much of Mr. George Floyd. Um, and with you being in that type of climate and that type of um, arena, arena career fields, yeah. The career field, arena, all of it. How do you, what's your take on everything that's going on and, and what would you like to see happen as a result of the protest? I am uh, personally <laughs> exhausted. <laughs> um, with, I'm not exhausted with the work. I'm exhausted with the emotional, um, strain that comes with doing the work, um, which I don't mind. I've already known that. Uh, I kept telling people or keep telling people that 2015, 2016 for me was a test. Um, that was after I had started my whole like racial and social justice activism through my blog and things like that. I was really um, 
inspired um, and started that walk or that journey after Trayvon Martin happened. Um, however, uh, 2015 with cases with Walter Scott, Philando Castile, like countless other names of, of black men, black women and trans um, who were killed by the police were out and still are outstanding. Um, the numbers very high. Um, I was I was mad then and I was okay with the marches and protests then. Mm -hmm. But after I was marching and protesting in the street, I literally was exhausted from that. Like my feet hurt and my feelings hurt. <laughs> At the same time too, I realized that, okay, I need to make sure more than anything that I'm at the table when these decisions are being made against black and brown people who aren't necessarily at those tables. I need to make sure I'm one of those people or I make sure if I'm coming that I'm bringing a whole line of other black people behind me or with me that if I can't be in that table or in that room hey you go in that like you're accountable or you're eligible to be in that table in that room so you need to be there um so making sure that I'm I made it my mission from 2015 2016 that that was a thing that I was going to do now that we're here in 2020 and it's still I'm seeing some of the same things happen again I think that this time is a little different I think people are a lot more fed up I think a lot more people are shaken up and like, literally I can't sit by and not do this anymore. Um, I can't watch anymore, what can I do? Um, and that to see that is inspiring. People who were silent before are like literally taking a stance now. Organizations are doing it, businesses are doing it, individuals are doing it. And I think that's great. Um, I think the timing of this is, is uh, very, um, I don't want to say impactful, but it's overall, it's, it's making a difference. The fact that people are at home quarantine and feel like they want to do something or they are out in the streets every day, especially here in Columbia, there's people out there straight in the morning as soon as the sun comes up, they're out there with their signs. There's a bigger crowd around two and then uh, I drove by one night at 10.30, 11 o'clock at night, and people were still out there holding up signs. Um, so I don't think that this time it will be a moment where people are just protesting, just a protest. I think people are actually looking and wanting something out of it. I know I Can't Breathe South Carolina had a list of demands that they're following through with city officials and count, um, uh, city council members, things like that, that they're like, hey, these are de our demands. This is what we're expecting. Um, and they're actually checking for that um, and holding them accountable. So I think that's great. Okay. Yeah. People are really committed out there. I think um, you're frozen on my end. Yeah. It's, it says your internet connection is unstable. What that's been like for weeks now. So hopefully um, we'll get that fixed later on. But now tell me a little bit about um, as far as your being a Christian, spiritually, how do you come to terms or how do you reckon what is going on now and have that balance between the natural and the spiritual? Because, you know, these times a lot of people, this things that are going on make a lot of people angry. So how, as a Christian, do you maintain spirituality and love for, for your fellow brother when your fellow brother is, you know, showing you hate? I think that has to deal with your personal walk and your spirituality, uh, your relationship with, G with Jesus. Um, for me personally, I've, I dealt with that in 2015 and 16, excuse me. Like I didn't, it's not the fact that I've overcome that test now and I'm good. No, it's, it's literally a conditioning of yourself. It's an everyday walk with Christ and you see how he loves you yourself and others when you walk with him that closely, whether that's for me is, is spontaneous worship moments every morning with with upper room <laughs> on YouTube. Um, and sometimes, um, most of the time too, I'm 
pulling out my Bible. I'm going through different scriptures and reading and asking him questions. I'm writing in my prayer journal. I'm, I'm having a dialogue with him, not a monologue. I'm not waiting. Like, I'm not just the one talking. Um, I'm waiting to hear a response and there's a conversation. Um, and I, I think that's one thing that Christians are quickly, especially during this time, probably just venting to God or like, why, 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 without taking the time to condition themselves to understand God and see things in his eyes. Um, so it, it takes conditioning. It takes practice. Um, I will say all day, every day, like, yes, as a Christian, if, if you hate me for the color of my skin, if you are a part of the alt-right, the KKK, some type of white nationalist group, God's going to hold me accountable and you accountable for how we treat one another. You get to choose whatever you want to do, but as for me, if I want to be right with God, I want to get into heaven, like, <laughs> I can look clearly, like, at you with the same love that he's given me and showing me, because that's the point. So for me personally, I've just gotten to a point where that stuff doesn't doesn't bother me. Um, I'm to the point where like, listen, you know, I can't control my skin, but I still love you. And I know that God loves you and, and you just need that reminder. I'll just tell you that going about my business, pray for you later, all this stuff. Um, as far as dealing with this climate, same thing, keeping yourself tethered to a routine, keeping yourself um, conditioned to, um, communicate, pray constantly, um, and believe, actually seek what you're saying and believe in what you're speaking into existence. Um, another thing that I do too is, um, I have, uh, this thing on my phone is called screen time where I limit between eight and five me going on to apps. So it keeps track of how much I spend on like I, Instagram, Facebook, um, any type of social media platform, anything even, even outside of that. Like I can't even check my pictures. Um, it, it has it blocked off. And I've, I've said it that way um, to where during eight and five, I shouldn't be on my phone like that. Like there's no absolute reason between those hours during those times that I should be on my phone. So while I'm during that time, um, trying to seek and find other things to do or just mind trying to scroll or whatever is like, no, put the phone down and talk to God. Like that's my constant and daily reminder. So if you have to set some type of parameters around to remind you of that, then that's what I say do. Um, and one thing that I make sure that I push and uh, get other people to do when it comes to organizing is to pray before every meeting and pray at the end of every meeting pray before an event, send, send God angels out ahead of you, before you, like go and anoint the place, make sure, like you send your, your team. Yes, the National Guard is out there. Yes, the police is out there in riot gear or whatever, but no, y'all don't know my God. <laughs> this is the same one that took out every other man in the middle of the night <laughs> and then surrounded Elijah. And he was like, Show my servant, you God, that there's more with us than that's with them. You better so come. I think of that story every time when I'm out, like even protesting, like, God got us. I ain't scared. Like, they look at me straight in my face. They watch it. The white nationalist, that, that has happened. The white nationalist group know I'm one of these organizers. I'm looking at them and they look at me. I was like, all right, angels. All right, bet. Y'all got it. I ain't even got to look at them no more because... And that's irrelevant. <laughs> so that's the type of faith that I personally have is literally that constant prayer time with, with God. That's, that's my, that's my rock. Okay, good. Okay. So that's a segue into my next question for you is. I probably already answered some of your next question. <laughs> what, what is the scripture that you're standing on right now? And do you have a scripture that overall encompasses everything like mind, body, and spirit? Is there one scripture that you say or an affirmation that you say daily, or does it change per situation or whatever may be going on at that very time? Yeah, like it changes per situation for me. Um, yeah, it just depends on what I'm speaking against or speaking to. Uh, and I have 
scriptures that I've written down and studied that I'll go back to that book and pull out and say, I need this right now. Right now, what I'm focused on is um, because of there's so much, um, untrust as far as especially with the government with police Mm -hmm. um you don't know who's for you or against you uh during this time and just overall like we've had coronavirus we had have murderous hornets um we've a lot of people aren't talking about the five asteroids that almost hit the earth one was bigger than the empire state building Mm -hmm. that passed by very closely. Um, I think that was last week, if I'm not mistaken. Um, So my constant thing that I hold on to is my favorite scripture, Matthew 6, 33, um, which is talking, well, before that, 6, 20, maybe 23, 24, 25-ish, is talking about the fowls of the air, how literally the birds in the air don't have any type of worry. Um, they go throughout their life. I, I have two mindsets of, okay, well, is the bird looking for food? And then God just supplies them food right there, like a little popcorn or something right there <laughs> as they're like looking in an area for food. Or are they literally just going and God is like, here, you need food. Oh, thank you, Lord. Or here's a shelter from the rain. Oh, thank you, Lord. Or just like, they just, are moved by God to to get those things or if they're seeking those things out. So I have two mindset when it comes to that whole story. But um, that's my favorite scripture because at the end of it is seek God first and everything else should be added to you. So I don't have to ask for anything besides stuff from God, things I can only get from God, wisdom, counsel, might, literally everything. My strength is from the Lord. So during this time of stuff just randomly happening, not randomly, I think God, and I definitely believe God is an intentional God. Mm -hmm. I have to remind myself that, Lord, I don't know what you're doing right now because this stuff right here look crazy, Um, but I trust you. And I keep constantly telling myself that when I'm feeling like I'm about to, like I need to breathe for a second, like have an anxiety attack I don't want to necessarily attack just an anxious moment of like no let me calm that down before that even thought tries to kick in like I don't know what's going on I have no idea what you're doing I don't know why you brought me in on this but I trust you and for me that gives my subconscious to me like a peace that I don't I think I once again condition and train myself to have because if God like I said God did it before I've seen him doing it multiple times in my life. I had that trust that I know that he'll supply, that he'll come through. Mm -hmm. So that's what I lean back on. And that's truly a walk of faith, is it not? Absolutely. So how do you encourage other millennials that, you know, surround you who may not have the same strength or faith that you have? How do you calm a situation or how do you speak life into a particular situation or or even reason with those that are unreasonable and inconsolable at a time like this that are your peer group well good thing about my peer group um they're they're calm that they're not the latter which you said um i have not Um, necessarily experience that. Um, I think too, my friends know to come to me for wisdom and spiritual advice or just to pray with them, um, which I'm thankful for that. Um, But overall with people who I might not be that acquaint with, um, regardless still at the end of the day, I'm an ambassador for Christ. So I'm pushing the same things that I'm pushing with with them as well i always let them vent say whatever you gotta say 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 how you feel it i can take it like i don't take none of that stuff personal um vent say what you gotta say and then um we're gonna take a moment to breathe and regret gather ourselves and i'm gonna ask you what can you control 
and then I'm going to ask you, what do you want to do? Like literally what in your, like what's in your reach that you want to do and bring change. And if you want me to help you with that, or if you just needed me to help center you and narrow you in so you can go forward, then that was clearly my job. And I'm perfectly fine with that. But before you leave, like God, I pray God covers you and I pray God gives you clarity on what you need to do. I pray that you get your peace. I pray that you get your passion. I, I feel like that your ears open to him. I'm speaking affirmations and just saying, saying that. I think certain people think that we have to be like, all right, let's, let's pray. Let's close our eyes and bless the Lord. Uh, we ain't got to, like, we, we can't be doing that anymore. Like, it's a conversation. Talk, talk to God. Like we praying like, uh, uh, right now in the name of Jesus, like, either command it down or even then like I tell people like I'm not all blunt and out outward with it when people try to leave or part from me I'm like um you're gonna be covered God has you surrounded and I speak my prayer like that like it doesn't have to be anything deep right okay and you froze but you can still hear me right Can you still hear me? Oh, did we lose? Hmm. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Because you had froze and I didn't see. <laughs> yes, you were just, and I didn't hear anything. But okay, we're almost, um, we're almost finished anyway, since especially with all this that's okay, going computer. on. Yeah, all of y'all. So um, tell me, who is your mentor or your idol? Who oh do you, uh, is there anyone that you admire that you kind of glean from or you, so, you learn from anybody that you're studying? I think there's a lot of people that I've kind of gotten rid of the idea of mentors and I never, never like really had an idol. I didn't believe in that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, as I meet people or see something, I glean from what I can get from them in those moments or when I'm talking with them or what, if I'm reading a book or something, like I glean from those moments and those um, instances uh, from them. But there's no one that I consistently pull from. Okay. I think I pull from everybody. Okay. Now, um, answer this question for me. If there was one thing that you could change right now, what would it be? And that could be something that you could change in the world, something you would change about yourself, anything. If you, if you were granted um, the ability to have one thing that you you wish for or one thing that you're praying for given unto you, what would that be? Jesus to tell me the date or when he coming back. <laughs> Honestly, give, give me a date, sir. You know, uh, for the date that, uh, that Jesus is returning? <laughs> Even the angels don't know, Jesus, just tell me. I'm, I'm your faithful servant. Just tell me. <laughs> that's it that's all I need <laughs> is I gonna be here let me stop <laughs> but no. um, now that I joked about that I can't think of nothing else now okay. um, but no I think uh, there's nothing that I will hope or wish for that wasn't out of, out of God's will so I would just pray for God's will to be done overall. That's my biggest prayer. I, Lord, I, I want racism to end, but I want your will to be done. If racism in. Your sound is out. I don't know why. Try and mute and unmute and see. Okay, I hear you now. You hear me? Yes. You heard me before it. Okay. We're about to get off of here before this thing just goes kaput because I don't, I, I don't know if it's the traffic. Um, 
Well, yeah, that's what they tried to, to tell me initially that it's so many people because people are home now and so many people are working from home and they're online that the internet has just completely like slowed down. I said, Lord, if this thing just just stops all together, I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do. But okay. Um, Did you get my answer though? Not, not really. Say it again. You okay. said something at the end. Yeah. What was the last thing you heard? <laughs> <laughs> we, we were talking about... Um, you were talking about God coming back and you wanted to know the date. And what was the last thing you... I think I, like I said more than anything that I just pray for God's will to be done. I saw you nod your head with that. I yeah. saw that one. I said I could pray all day that I want racism on the end right now. But if racism, racism not ending right now, like if race is it racism ending right now will stop a thousand people who will be saved during this gap that racism hasn't ended then i prefer the thousand people get saved and then that happening versus it happening right now and those people missing that like needing this yeah um, so i'm really big on let god do what he do because he know he knows absolute more than than we do and mm -hmm. i i hope that those don't sound like cop-out answers uh but literally my friends will call me and ask me deep questions and stuff like that. And they're like, Ayana, we can't ask you stuff like that. Cause you always go back to some type of dismissive answer, leaning in on God. But I was like, no, cause certain questions and certain things I don't have a worry or um, worry for because I, I just trust him. Amen. Very good. Very good. Strong faith. Young woman with strong faith. Um, okay. So on a lighter note, we're going to say, what do you like to do for fun? How do you <laughs> unwind? What does your self-care look like? Um, self-care looks like Netflix. I am a big movie nerd. Uh, during this time, too, that is something that I found. I used to have a schedule of when I watched movies. And now... It's like randomly throughout the day because my mind will be so wrapped up and caught up on certain stuff. And I'll look like, okay, I don't have a meeting until this time. So let me squeeze in a show or a movie during this time to make my mind get off of the craziness that I'm now experiencing. Mm -hmm. um, so those are de-stressors. Um, but yeah, movies, shows, um, I miss painting. Um, I had an opportunity. It was funny because... I felt the nudge from God to, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. I felt the nudge from God to do those things like painting, finish my certifications for my business and all this stuff prior to all of the protests, mm -hmm. but I was being a little lax on it and the protests and stuff happened and I literally didn't even have time to do any certifications or anything like that. So, um, I was like, oh, that's why you said that. Mm. And I know he was looking at me like, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I tried to warn you. <laughs> I don't do nothing in my land unless I build tomorrow's profits first. Girl, I tried to tell you. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, so those are my ways of de-stressing de movies. Um, my friends still have little food-like gatherings. Um, so we'll do Taco Tuesday or Wine Down Wednesday or or something like that. So doing those uh, things like that make me, allow me to have moments outside the house okay. that I can just kind of, I want to say relax. They're, they are relaxing to a certain extent, except for when these conversations or work comes up or we're like dissecting something deep. Um, and then mentally my brain has to gear right back up again. But other than that, like it's, it's good. So that is also kind of a little of the the next question I was going to ask you, which I was just going to ask you, how do you nurture mind, body, and spirit? Yep. Food, so, water, exercise. Your food, water, and exercise. Water. <laughs> water, food, water, exercise, water, water, water. So for the mind... 
stimulate your mind by devotions, prayer. That's spirit too, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> okay. Mind is probably me doing those certifications for my business. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm talking pre-protest. I'm not talking now. Okay. Um, yeah. And the body is the exercise and we already know the spirit part. Mm -hmm. So in closing, what is your, um, what is your theme for the year and what would you like to, a, a thought or a prayer that you would like to leave with our viewers? I'm going to answer the latter part of that because I don't think I have a theme for 2020. Okay. Let God do what he do <laughs> at this point. <laughs> um, I did have plans to go to Africa this year. I'm still eyeballing it um, because this was the year of return. Um, I wish somebody would have told me that on New Year's because then I would have made sure I went on New Year's. But anyway, <laughs> uh, Africa 2020 is still, is still the goal. Um, last words or closing remarks for your viewers. Um, don't feel like you one that God isn't as tangible as I made him sound, um, that he's so far away or that there's no coming back. I know some people have that belief. That's not a thing. He's standing right next to you. You just gotta see him. Um, and you gotta move. And I think too, there's a lot of people who don't take or make things practical and really simplify it down to something that they can believe, control and do. Um, and that's in all things, not just through your religious beliefs or um, even how involved you want to be as far as with everything going on and bringing change. Um, and if that is something you're interested in, I encourage you to reach out. I am busy, but I make sure to check my Facebook messages or my phone. Um, calling me is the best go-to. I will say that. Um, people who call me literally get priority um but text messages are fine it might take me a couple hours to respond back but um i think when everything was first going down people were calling me and consulting with me on what to do because they know that this has been my line of work day in day out if protests are happening if marches are happening or not regardless i'm still doing the work um, so I have multiple ideas and ways of how people can get involved so they can just reach out and let, let me know what that is. But, um, there's always something that you as an individual, as a family, um, as a church, whatever co communities you're a part of, there's always something for you to do. There's always something for you to contribute. You have a purpose, you have a, um, calling, um, just yield yourself to, to, doing that that work okay and do you mind um giving us once again the name of your business your website and your social media handles yes so i am the owner and ceo of reviving solutions r-e-v-i-v-i-n-g uh solutions uh llc that is on facebook that is on Instagram. And I have a website. It is reviving solutions llc.com. Same thing with the email. Um, so feel free to look up those those items, those arenas. Um, I try to do organizational stuff on there. If you're looking for my activism stuff, um, just follow my personal page. And I can point you kind of in that right direction. I think I can probably send you the link, Mom, so that you can tag that page as well when you post this. Okay. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much, daughter. Uh, it's always a pleasure. <laughs> no problem, Mama. And learning all the great things that you're doing. Yeah. I so appreciate you. And for those that don't know, when she was a baby, I started calling her mama. That was her nickname. That's and true. she became a little mama. She bossed everybody around in the house. 
she was a natural born leader. So y'all watch what y'all call y'all children. <laughs> watch the names you give your children because they will live up to it. I still call her mama because she <laughs> acts like my mama. Do. But that's that's my girl. My actual government name though means beautiful flower like God. Yes, it does. Thank you. And what's the middle name mean? Like God. I put two and two together. Okay, well they didn't know that. So oh, it sorry. is Ayana Michaela, not Ayana Noemi. And really I wanted it to say Ayana Mikala. But they they said Michaela, so I just went with Michaela. But it was Ayana Mikala. But, oh, that's how you were gonna pronounce it. Yeah, I just wanted something different. But oh, I just <laughs> now heard that for the first. <laughs> My name is Ayana Mikala. We are, we both kind of laugh alike and cover our, our mouth at the same time, didn't we? Woo. The more things change, the more they stay the same. But I thank you. I don't think that was an appropriate quote for that moment, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm just saying, we, we're different, but we're like the same. It, it's, it, I, I get with you. But thank you so much for agreeing to be a guest on Wisdom and Insights. Coffee, donuts, and conversation. We have truly enjoyed you this morning. And enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed what I said. Enjoy your rest of your day. I'm sure they had. Okay. Love you. Love you too.